Okay, so let's practice using IAM roles for our EC2 instance. So at first, I'm going to connect to my EC2 instance. You can SSH or you can use EC2 instance connect if you wanted to. I will use EC2 instance connect because it's just going to be in my web browser and a little bit simpler. So back into my instance, we have EC2 user, uh, instance connect right here, and we are in our EC2 instance. So as we can see, we are EC2 user at and the private IP. So regardless if you're using EC2 uh, instance connect, or SSH through your terminal or whatever with the putty, then if you see this, we are at the same stage, okay? So now you can just do some Linux commands, for example, ping Google, and you can get some information out of Google, uh, and I will do control C to go out of it, or issue any kind of Linux commands you want, okay? You don't need to know Linux command going into the exam, but this is just a Linux terminal available to you right now in the cloud. So we'll type clear to clear the screen, and next, we have to run some IAM commands. So the cool thing is that the Amazon Linux 2 AMI we're using right now comes with the AWS CLI. And so as we can see, it is installed. So what we can do is start using some commands. For example, AWS IAM list users. And if we do so, it says unable to look at credentials. You can configure credentials by using AWS configure. So we could indeed run AWS configure to configure the credentials and specify an access ID, a secret access key, and a region name. But this is a really, really, really bad idea. And the reason is that if we run AWS configure and enter our personal details onto this EC2 instance, then anyone else in our account could again connect to our EC2 instance, for example, using EC2 instance connect, and retrieve the value of these credentials in our instance, which is not what we want. This is something that's really, really bad. And so as a rule of thumb, never, ever, ever enter your IAM API key, so the access key ID and the secret access key into an EC2 instance. This is horrible. And if you see someone doing it, please show them this video. Instead, what we have to do is use IAM roles. So if you remember when we were in the management console, and we were in IAM, we had created an IAM role. So let's go back into the roles. We had this demo role for EC2 that had one policy attached called IAM read-only access. So we are going to attach this role onto our EC2 instance to provide it with credentials. Okay, so how do we do this? For this, we can go into security, and as you can see, there is no IAM role right now onto our instance. So what we can do is go back to our instances, action, security, and then modify IAM role. Here we have to choose an IAM role. So we have demo role for EC2 and click on save to attach this IAM role into our instance. So if we go back to security, now the IAM role attached to our instance is demo role for EC2. So the effect of this is that now, if we do AWS IAM list users and press enter, well, we are getting a response around the users from IAM. So as we can see, we did not run the command AWS configure, we just ran well, attached an IAM role and ran this command and it worked. And as a proof, if we go into this role and detach this permission, so now it's gone, and run the command again, we're getting an access denied. So the role is really linked now to the EC2 instance and this is how we provide AWS credentials to our EC2 instances, only, only through IAM roles, okay? So if we go back to IAM and we attach a policy to this role and go back to IAM read-only access, attach this policy, and then rerun the command. We get an access denied because sometimes it can take a little bit of time to propagate the changes from IAM into AWS, but if we run it one more time, we're getting the output we expect, which is what we want. So this is very important for you to understand this. Use IAM roles for your EC2 instances. So this is hopefully good for you. I hope you like this hands-on and I will see you in the next lecture.